Kia ora, hello, I'm Philip Duncan. Thank you so much for joining us for our Climate Watch update for the month of November and also the outlook for summer. Brought to you in association with ruralweather.co.nz and our business partners at IBM. So we've got La Nina building. There is a 70% chance of La Nina coming in this summer, according to the Bureau of Meteorology, and we do trust their scientists. So La Nina is building up. We're going to explain in this video what that likely means for our weather patterns this summer and this November in the New Zealand area plus parts of Australia. So we kick off with the animated map for the 1st of November. What this is showing you is a large area of high pressure dominating big chunk of Australia, but it's on its way for New Zealand. We've also got a low to the north, and that's likely to drive in some wet weather for the eastern North Island for the first week of November. But we kick off with discussing La Nina and what is going on. So we're into that alert zone, not technically yet into the La Nina yet, but the Bureau of Meteorology uh, scientists are saying it is on the cards. When you take a look at the model of models, this is the average of all the international models and what they're picking, you can see for November we are just on the edge there of being in the neutral zone going into La Nina. So we head in towards January, it just shifts a little bit further into La Nina and then as we get into March of next year it looks as though it's pulling back into that neutral zone. So it does look as though we've got a moderate La Nina perhaps coming through this summer and that could encourage more humidity, more clouds in northern New Zealand and more of those easterlies which by the way we've got for the first week of November. What is La Nina? Well it's when you've got the easterly winds blowing like this across the Pacific Ocean and the warm water on the surface gets pushed all the way over to the western Pacific. So warmer on the western side, cooler on the eastern side, and that is exactly what you see here with the sea surface temperature anomaly map. In other words, how much warmer or cooler than average is it? And you can see it's cooler than average right through this large area, but it's warmer than average out here on the western side and down here towards New Zealand. The warmer the sea surface temperatures, the higher the chances are of cloud, humidity, and rainmakers, and yes, also tropical cyclones. So let's take a look now, week by week, for the first three weeks of the month, and we can see where the highs and lows are likely to be placed. So we do kick off with the first week with that small low north of New Zealand. Remember, it's going to be hanging around for maybe right through until the weekend. So that will encourage wet weather moving down into the North Island. Uh, there's not really high or low pressure in this zone, but this big high will be tracking across the South Island in the days ahead. But when you take a look at this at a glance, you can certainly see there's a line of high pressure coming in from the Indian Ocean, across Australia, across the Tasman, over New Zealand, and then out to the east. No real signs of La Nina, although a bit of low pressure up to the north here. That is basically what we're looking for. And down in the Southern Ocean, very normal for this time of the year. By week two, November seven, we kick off with a remarkably similar looking air pressure map. High pressure moving into the New Zealand area. That area of low pressure takes until next week before it starts to move out to the east. So it'll bring in a little bit of rain, but not the big widespread rain events that maybe some of you might be thinking about with La Nina. So it's a bit of a patchy La Nina at this stage for us in New Zealand. High pressure is certainly dominating into the second week. And when you look out to the west, in comes the next big area of high pressure. But it's a bit messy for Australia. Australia does have rainmakers on the way as we go through the next few weeks. By the third of oh, the third week of November, the 14th, so that's the halfway mark, and we take a look at this weather map because what's coming in over Western Australia will be reaching New Zealand by the fourth week. So what you see here looks very similar to weeks one and two. We've got another area of low pressure just to the north of the country, and again, a stream of highs from the Indian Ocean across South Australia, or the southern half of Australia, I should say, and then out into the New Zealand area, but mixed in with a few low pressure systems. And look, as we head in towards uh, closer to December, still not a huge amount of activity up here. So that's why we are keeping an eye on what La Nina does, but at this stage, there's nothing too dramatic to suggest a major change for us. By the way, Queensland, right down to New South Wales, plenty of easterlies for you with wet weather. So those were all the maps. This is them now in a 14 day animation, or actually, sorry, a 16 day animation, takes you to the 16th of November. So you can just have a look at it. You can see generally there are some lows coming through, but the high pressure zones, and this is on a loop going around and around now, um, the high pressure zones certainly dominating the New Zealand area, lots of rainmakers in Australia, but they're quite short lived 
in the New Zealand area. But it's good to see some low pressure zones coming through. That means it's not going to be completely dry. And that's a bit of a change from the last few years uh, with our weather patterns. So that's the animation we will put. Uh, obviously, this is up on our website. You can rewatch really these animations as much as you need to. Uh, now, let's take a look at the rainfall. Let's get a bit more detailed. The first week of November, departure from normal. Red means drier than average. White, about normal. And blue, wetter than average. And you can certainly see... New Zealand is looking quite dry for that first week, but the signs of the rain here in the northeastern corner coming down into East Cape and Gisborne. When you look at Australia, uh, certainly very dry for them, only for now. I think that wet weather will be on its way. A bit more detail now. So here is the forecast rainfall for the first 16 days of November. What we are seeing here in the purple and the red areas on the key, that's around 60 to 100 millimeters of rain over the next 14 days. So that is the uh, GFS model from America that's predicting this one. So that means places like the Bay of Islands might be getting into the 50 or 60 millimeter mark by the looks of it. But these areas here, if that low to the north and then the, another one following it sticks around enough and you've got those La Nina-like easterlies, that's why we're seeing those better rainfall totals. But look how quickly it drops off as you head towards like Danny Verk southwards, getting into wider upper, those rainfall totals here over the next 16 days are just uh, 10 millimeters to about 30 or 40. So there's a very fine line as you get into South Hawke's Bay, southern parts of Hawke's Bay, getting into northern parts of wider upper. And look at this down in Canterbury, which is now becoming one of the drier parts of the country, uh, as is the coastal side of wider upper looking very dry with very little rain on the way for the next two full weeks ahead. Some areas in here are showing, showing just one to five millimeters over 16 days. So pretty dry stuff on the eastern side, bit of rain for Fiordland, but otherwise many of these central and eastern areas are looking quite dry. That's remember for the next 16 days ahead. Now we take a look at November's rainfall. This is brought to you by IBM, our business partners. And what you're looking for here is just those green and white shaded areas, that's showing more normal rainfall or even a little bit wetter than it has been. So that is good news. This is what we want to see. Now it's not dramatic. There is no big sort of sudden, by the looks of it anyway, big rainmaker, but New Zealand's small enough that one of those lows might linger longer and double the rainfall forecast. So it does actually bode a bit more positively than previous Novembers as far as getting some rain in. So a little bit of rain in the north, a little bit in the east, and you can see here in Marlborough and some coastal parts of Canterbury. So that's for November. This is for the next three months ahead, taking us through January and potentially La Nina. This looks like La Nina. You can see the easterly winds are driving in a bit of rain for those areas. It's not a huge amount. It's not necessarily saying it's going to be much wetter than usual, but it's leaning a little bit wetter than usual in those green shaded areas, looking a lot like La Nina. But you can also see what happens with those east and northeast winds. It dries out all of these other areas. So those are the next three months ahead. Uh, this is the same map, but showing Australia in there as well. In fact, let me just step off the screen a wee bit. You can see how New Zealand and Tasmania, the only areas that are showing signs of being drier, most of Australia leans a little bit wetter over the next few months ahead, which is not that surprising. Now, temperatures for November, the North Island's leaning about half a degree above average. The South Island, nearly one degree above average for the month of November. And over here in New South Wales, the Easterlies, the clouds, that's going to drop your temperatures on average by about half a degree. Tasmania, more like New Zealand. Let's take a look at the next three months ahead and it gets even warmer in the New Zealand area. 0.6 is the lowest departure from normal for the North Island. Most other places are 0 0.7, 0 0.8. And you get down to the southwestern corner of the South Island and you're one degree above average, whereas inland parts of New South Wales nearly one degree below average as we go through the next three months coming up. So we've got a lot of change going on. Um, it's, a, it's a fairly normal November weather pattern where we do tend to see the storms just taking a bit of a break. But remember, November 1 also kicks off the South Pacific cyclone season. So we will be keeping a close eye on this area up here for tropical storms forming over the next few months and uh, that season doesn't end until the end of April. So it's usually the start of next year, and if we've got La Nina around, that could just add a little bit more fuel to that fire 
north of New Zealand. That is all from me. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you again in one month.